Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Enter Instead of Tab video series where I'm teaching you how to make it so that Enter will move to the next record instead of just the next field like it normally does. And if you haven't watched part one, go watch that first. That was the beginner edition where you can do it with no programming. Today in part two, this is for developers. We're going to use a little bit of VBA and the key down event to teach you how to do this with some other cool tricks. All right, so in part one, we used different properties and buttons to change the behavior of how the enter key works. And that works okay, but it's got some limitations. Today, we're going to learn how to do it with code. We can use the key down event and intercept the keystrokes as the user presses them on the keyboard. Of course, if you've never done any VBA before, go watch this video. It'll get you started in about 20 minutes. You should know how to write an if then statement. You should know how to use the go to record command. If not, watch this video. It also covers go to control, but it's, it's, it teach you both. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so let's implement this code on the customer form. Actually, let's use the customer list form. Makes a little more sense here. Um, what I'm going to do is go to design view. Now, the first thing you have to do, and this is the step that a lot of people miss or forget, is that in order for the form to intercept the keystrokes, you have to go to the bottom of the event tab and find this property called key preview and set that to yes. All right. What that does is it allows the form to grab the keystrokes before the controls get them. And you can change them. You can stop them. You can intercept them. You can do stuff. If not, the form doesn't see you pressing the keys at all. Okay. Now, once that's on, we can go to the forms key down event. So find on events, find key down. It's right there. There's a key down event. Hit the dot, dot, dot. That should open up your VB window. There it is. Let me resize mine real quick. All right, there we go. So we're in the key down event. Now, key down gets some information. It gets the key code, which is the ASCII character key code of the key that was pressed. I'm not going to go into ASCII characters, but every, every character's got its own code, right? A is 65 and so on. And shift is an integer determining whether or not the shift key, control key, or alt key were pressed, or all three. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and say if key code equals... 13, that's the key code for the return key or the enter key. Or if you don't want to have to remember 13, there's a special constant for it. It's VB key return. Then we're going to do some stuff. And if. All right. So at this point, the return key has been pressed. Okay. Now I want to go to the next record. So that's going to be do command dot go to record. And then it's just, we can just go comma, comma and then AC next. You can use the defaults there. Basically, the, the defaults are fine. The object that you're on, move to the next record. Okay, one more step though. We're at this point, we're gonna set the key code equals zero. What does that do? That clears the key. That basically acts like you didn't press anything because if you don't do that, then the form is still gonna also try to process that enter. Okay, that's what that does. So let's debug compile. All right, let's come back out here, close it, save it, open it, and now I'll press enter, 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 enter. See that? If I tab over and I press enter, 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 it stays in the same column. That's one thing that's actually better than using the other method because it goes back to the, the top of the tab order, the first character. Okay? Now, that VB key return, all right, that ASCII character 13. Where do I find the big long list of all of these? Well, you can you can use the object browser to find a list of those. Just search for VB key and you'll see. And let me show you this. So go to view and then object browser. OK, and I, I just searched for it a minute ago. So it's in here. So right here in the search box, type in VB key and hit search. And now you're going to get a list. Look over here of all the different constants that start with VB key. See VB key back, VB key cancel. VB key control. You got VB key A, B, C, D, E, F, F1, F2, F3. Here's all the constants right there. You can also Google them. Usually I find it easier just to Google them on Microsoft's site. But I don't talk about the object browser much, so that's a, a good little use for it. You search for VBA constants, it'll take you to Microsoft's site. You just come in here and find them on here too, like key codes. There's a big long list of them, right? Or if you want to use the numbers, 
you can just tell access to tell you what what character was pressed. Watch this. In the key down event, say right here, message box, you know, the key pressed pressed was and key code. That'll give you the ASCII value of it. So if I come out here and hit the lowercase a, boom, that was 65, see? Or if I hit the space bar, boom, 32. Or enter, 13. There you go, see? And you can use those character codes if you want to. All right, we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, now how about going backwards, right? We can enter to go forward. What about going backwards? What about maybe shift enter? Shift enter. Well, that's what that other variable is for. Where is it? Shift right here. All right, so let's change this to say right inside of here. If we've hit the enter key, we're going to say if shift equals one, then we're going to go to the previous record. Otherwise, we're going to go to the next record. So we're going to move this one down here and we're going to change this guy to I'm just going to backspace over that comma and hit the comma again that'll give you the the pop-up and we'll go to previous there we go so if the shift key is on go to previous if not go to next all right save it debug compile come back out meow ready enter 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 shift enter 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 see that that's the shift key is on now this brings up a concept called bit masking, okay, where you can use one value to represent multiple things. And you see this a lot in access or in, in programming in general. So if the shift key is one, then it was just a shift key that was pressed. If it's the control key, it's two. And if it's the alt key, it goes to four. Now, why do they do that? Why not just three? Well, because you can use these to get any combination of those characters, right? So shift plus control is three which is one plus two. See, shift plus alt now becomes five. No other combination will give you a five. If you, if you get a five, you know it's that unique combination. Control and alt is six and only six. All three of them together is seven, right? That's called bit masking. Why is it called bit masking? It has to do with manipulating the bits in a byte and blah, blah, blah. It's just squeezing a lot of information into a tiny space. Programmers back in the 60s and 70s and 80s even were really, really good at that. <laughs> they got very creative. When a kilobyte of memory costs a thousand dollars, you have to be, and and that's why we got stuck in that Y two K problem. Remember, remember that from way back when? Okay. Anyways, all right. So one more thing we might want to do in here, and that's a little error handling because if I go Shift Enter a couple times and go past the first record, I get you can't go to the specified record. And of course, we don't want this to happen for our end users, right? Uh, especially if we're giving them an ACCDE file to work with, right? an execute only version because then their their database will just crash. You got to handle all these errors people hand handle yo errors. All right. So, right in here, a real simple on error resume next will take care of that problem. I don't like to use on error resume next as a crutch, especially in complicated stuff, but for something very simple like this, it's fine. If you run into an error, just ignore it, move on. Right? That's 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 fine here. It's perfectly fine here. And we'll come in here and go tab 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 and then uh, enter, 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 and then shift, enter, 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 and it just ignores it. See that? Okay. If you want to learn about more about, if you want to learn about more about, <laughs> if you want to learn more about this key down stuff, I have another video where I teach you how to use the up and down keys, and you can basically use the arrow keys to move around a continuous form just like in Excel. So that's pretty cool. If you want to learn more about error handling and debugging, more than just that little on error resume next, well, I got a video for that too. I also have several lessons where I cover error handling and debugging in great detail in my Access Developer series. Speaking of which, if you like me, if you like my style, if you like my wacky sense of humor, well, I got tons and tons of developer lessons available on my website. Check it out. You'll find links to all this stuff down below. And that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, folks. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. 
I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. 
You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.